local it's a combination of global and local. That's what it means. You know, when you say getting globally relevant standards or products and bringing it into, you know, local um, environments, I would say working from the inside out. Not bringing global standards here to local, you know, environments. I would say taking it from the inside out. Working from here as a local person, we need to go back to the roots. We need to look into ourselves as a people, as you know, people from Wari, people from Delta State, people from Nigeria, and say, what is it that we can take back, you know, out there to, to the globe, out to the world, so that it's coming from us and going back in there. And then what is, um, what is global, you know, this global village? We hear it all the time. It's a buzzword, everybody's using it. Global Village was you know, started by Marshall McLuhan in 1960. In the 1960s, um, for those who studied communications, you would know, Marshall McLuhan predicted you know, the World Wide Web in the 1960s. And then the internet was created in 1989. That was almost 30 years after he had predicted it. That's somebody who was thinking. And he said that the world will become a global village. That is, we've been intercon in interconnected such that the world is like a central nervous system that is connected by communications. So, this is already a village. It's a global village. The world is a village. There's no need to now be so focused on, you know, uh, international. You know how we like international. We tend to always think international. And I'm saying, look back in, it's a village. What are some of the characteristics of a village that you know, we can look into? A village is, I listed just a few, a village is local. You know, a village is local. It's about community, togetherness, collaboration. These are the things that we're looking at now. You know how the world is cyclical from what we've you know, known before. You say fashion and they'd be like, oh, we, we wore that in, in the 70s, and that's what people are wearing now. You know, so we need to go back to basics and some of the things that we can learn from the village that we can put in, into ourselves right now and put it into the work that we do. You know, stop thinking, uh, stop trying to be inferior or thinking you're not good enough. You're special, there's a, a good thing that you have. You need to embrace your locality. And then we're looking at what, what, what is it about the globe? We cannot, you know, solve, we cannot solve the problems that we have now with the same thinking that created it. And that's what we're looking at. The theme says re-engineering the future. How do you want to re-engineer the future with the same thinking that got you there in the first place? You know, so you need to go a step higher. You need to go a level higher and think about, you know, create a new solution, create a new idea, you know, that would help you to go out of that, the, the problem in the first place. And I want to introduce us to neurological levels of change. This is a neuro-linguistic programming tool, but I want to look at it from the basics that we can learn. Neurological levels of change is, is just a tool that would help you. So you have a problem and you want to solve it. It's a practical tool that will help you, you know, create an action plan. It starts from a beginning. There's a beginning and then there's an outcome. So you're looking at the outcome. You're looking at the end. You start with the end in mind because you already have what you want to do. Right now, for the sake of this presentation, we're looking at re-engineering the future. You know, and... So, neurological levels of change. This is it. You start from the environment and then to the behavior, to the skills and capabilities. What skills and capabilities would you need to achieve your goal, to re-engineer the future? And then, what are your values and beliefs? You know, sometimes we say, ah, in my family, we don't do this. This is our, why? To my friend today and she was like, you know, our mothers would say, oh, don't do the baby like this. Don't lie the baby down like this. Why? They can't tell you. They say, that's how my mother used to do it. And our grandmother did it like that. We can't re-engineer the future with the same thinking, you know, that got us here. Culture is, you know, 
is what? What is culture? It's a behavior of people, a set people, a particular way. If you look at it, one person created it and then passed it on and passed it on. Most of the things we hold there today, they're useless. Most of the traditions that we are, that is keeping us stuck where we are today, they're useless. They're no longer working. And if it's not working, you need to ditch it. Right? So in as much as we're looking at our locality, we need to also look at what works. So what are the beliefs and values that you need to re-engineer your future? What are the beliefs and values that have stopped you from re-engineering the future? And then, what is your identity? What identity do you need to re-engineer the future? Who do you need to be to re-engineer the future? What is it that's about you that's stopping you? If I say I want to create a magazine now, what do I need to be? What are the skills that I need to, you know, start a magazine? Who do I need? What are the, what are the beliefs that I need to have? To, you know, some of, some of the things that have stopped us, they're very common. You can't do that here. Don't you know you're in worry? Don't you know you're in Delta State? I cannot do that in Delta State. I can't do that. Ah, it's your identity. Can't. It's the belief that you have. Somebody has programmed you and they've told you that you can't. Because growing up, they say you don't ask questions. Don't talk to your elders. You can't ask your teachers questions. They know better. You know more than your teacher. You know, so those things, have, you know, they've grown into us. And you, you know, you don't know, but this is just how you're thinking. You can't, you know, do more than you know. Your thoughts create your world. As a man thinks, so he is, and that's the truth. If you want to change your life, if you want to re-engineer the future, you must change the way you think. Who has said you can't do that? And if you can't do, then what can you do? And if you can't do it, who can? Right? And that, when you look at that, I there is your identity. Can't is the belief and the values that have held you down. And then do is the capability, the skills. You've already said you don't have it. You don't have the skills, right? What is it that you can do? What is it that you can do? We can't all do everything. I can program. He is a software developer. I can do that. I have an idea. I'm very technology savvy, but I'm not, you know, a programmer. But what is it that you can do? And then here, you can't do that in Delta State. That's your environment. What are some of the things that have held us back in Delta State? Some of them, they say, oh, when you, people will go read engineering because we want to work. And then you say, my village people have not given me my allotment. Or um, this wicked chief is taking everything and selling it out to some people. That's why I don't have a job. You know, so those are some of the things that are peculiar to us here. In, in this place, the government is so lazy, they're not doing anything, so I don't have a job. Those are some of the things here, your environment. So, with your goal in mind, I want us to, when you leave here, go back and think about it. What is it that you want to do? What is your goal? And what, what environment? Your environment is not just about Delta State, it's not just about Nigeria, it begins from you. Your environment is inside of you at first, your first environment, because you start from inside out. You can create your environment. I may be in worry, but I'm experiencing London. Do you understand? So you create it for yourself. When I meet people and they go, where are you from? I tell them, I'm from Delta State. Where in Delta State? The main thing is worry. I love worry. I'm an ambassador of worry. And then they don't, say, they don't say anything negative anymore. Why? Because I've changed it. Perception is greater than reality. How you see depends on what you experience, determines what you experience, right? So, you need to know, it's not about denying who we are. It's about, you know, really accepting yourself and finding what's unique in your environment. Going back to the neurological levels, what is it that's unique about Delta State? What are some of the things that we have here that are unique to us? Where there is the most problems is where there is the most opportunity. As long as you can solve problems, you're going to create value and then you're making money. Worry is challenged. Worry has problems. Delta State has problems. Nigeria has problems. There is money. That's why you see Chinese people coming. That's why you see people coming from America. Because they know. If we bring Mark Zuckerberg here, he's, without his Facebook, without anything to this place, he is going to still make billions. Do you know why? It's not about the environment. It's about us about what we think, right? So don't think you can't do that here. 
What is it that you want to do that, you're, you, you, that you feel your environment is limiting you? How can you now change it? How can you make it favor you? What are some of the things, the skills and the capability? So think globally, but act locally from here, right? So some of the things that are peculiar to us, I've listed a couple. I'm just going to talk about bit and leaf. Recently, I saw on the internet that some people in Texas had packaged bitter leaf into capsules, and they were selling for $40. $40 is about 14400 thereabouts. And I'm like, what? This is something that's everywhere. It's very predominant in Delta State. We have it a lot. In my compound, we have it. My mom will just wash it for me when I have, you know, stomach ache and I'll drink it. Even though it's bitter, she'll put it in a nice glass and I'll drink it, you know, and I'm feeling good. I was thinking, how can I, what are the components in bitter leaf that I can, that we can use to create something? To create, but you know, but I didn't pursue it. People, Americans, they want to make it into capsules and they're making money out of it, but this is ours, right? So we need to start thinking. What if I had, you know, the village is about togetherness, community. What if I had gone to somebody who had the skills that I needed and said, let us collaborate? So there's some things you want to do that you're not, you know, you, you may not be able to do on your own. Collaborate. Think local. Think local. In the village, they collaborate. Mama and Gazi, I'm cooking soup. Can I have salt, please? And we have a pot of soup. Don't be a small fish in a, in a small, don't think you're a big fish and stay in small water when you can combine with other small fish and be swimming in the ocean, right? So think about the things that you can do. And look there, jollof rice, why can't we package it to be like two minute noodles and sell it to the world? Jollof rice is being on CNN. People come here and say, have you eaten jollof rice? We fight because of jollof rice, Ghana jollof and Nigeria jollof. What have we done with it? What can we do with it, right? Let's start thinking. What do we have? Forget about what is there. We have 170 million people. This is global enough. 170 million to solve their problems. And the world is already a village. They can see you anyway. Do your thing and let people find you. They will find you if you use the right, you know, strategy. So, say, no need to, you know, talk about what are some of the values that have helped Dangote. Look at Dangote. Look at Mark Zuckerberg. If you, if you do like a if you do like a comparison, you'll see that they're similar. They looked at, Dwangata wanted to provide basic needs. In the village, people don't care about desires, they care about needs. So what are the needs that you can provide for people? What are the basic things that people would always, always, you know, care for their needs? Desires are secondary, but the needs are primary. And if you can solve their problems, you're going to make money. You're going to, you know, be creating value. So think about value, solving problems. Not about making money, but about solving problems. And think about your locality. Think about the things that you can take to them. So stop, you know, trying to, you know, uh, limit yourself. This is just a few of the tools that we have to our disposal to take our local to the global stage. You started here. There's Tomi Adeyemi, who wrote a book, Children of the Blood and Bone. She's an American, but she's Nigerian-American. And she's there. She wrote a book on Nigerian fantasy, created in Nigerian fantasy. And the book now, she signed seven figures deal. She's in America. She didn't write Harry Potter. There's Harry Potter already. There is uh, Twilight Saga. So you can't do American fantasy more than America. What can you give to them? Your locality. And she wrote about Nigeria. And she signed a seven, seven figure deal, one of the biggest book deals. She's celebrated everywhere now. She's 24 years old. She's in America and she's written about Nigeria. So think global, act local. Maintain, merge the local with your global and go global. It's your time, just bring your A game. There is nothing stopping you. You do not have a money challenge, you have an idea challenge. Think about it. Thank you.